everyone. I'm meeting up with my old friend Mr T and his amazing ice cream truck today. I've asked for his help to organise a surprise for one of my friends. Here he comes now. Hi Gecko. Hello Mr T. Thanks for coming. So what's the plan? Well, I think it's about time that my friend Vicky the Ice Cream Van had a treat of her own. She's always so busy serving yummy ice cream treats to other people that I thought it was about time someone made a treat for her. What a lovely idea, Gecko. Let's make Vicky the biggest, best ice cream ever. Hop in. So, Gecko. We've got lots of amazing ice cream in my machine at the back. But to make it really special, I think we need to find some treats to put on top. Great idea, Mr T. Sounds like we've got ourselves a treasure hunt. Hey look, Mr T. What's that over there? I think I see a treat box. Open it, Mr T. Let's see what's inside. It's two giant bags of sweets. These are going to add lots of colour to Vicky's ice cream treat and they'll be nice and chewy too. Amazing! Let's see what else we can find. Look, Gecko, there's another treat box here. Send it down the slide, Mr T. I wonder what it is. Hooray! It's a big box of waffles. Should we get back in the van and find some more treat boxes? So, Gecko, it's time to put some music on. Let's see if my old friends at the RNLI have seen anything. Oh, hi, Andy. You haven't seen any treat boxes round here, have you? As a matter of fact, they have. Have a look on deck. Hey, Gecko, I found one. Let's see what's inside. It's a huge bottle of my favourite sauce. Good job, Mr T. I wonder if there's any treasure around that pirate ship over there. Let's take a look in the treasure chest. We've found treasure. It's another treat box. Wow, it's a bag of giant marshmallows. Wow, Vicky will love them. Hey look, we're just passing Claremont Farm. Let's pop in and see if Farmer Andy has seen any treat boxes. Hey Gecko, good to see you again. Are you looking for a treat box? Yes, we are. Go and have a look in my tractor. We found another treat box. It's a giant chocolate bar. 
Wow, that's the biggest chocolate bar I've ever seen. I think that should be enough treats to make Vicky the most amazing ice cream creation. Let's go make it. To make the perfect ice cream creation for Vicky, we need the perfect ice cream cone. And I've got just the thing. That is brilliant. Let's get cracking. And now I think there should be something healthy in there as well. Remember them strawberries that we got from Claremont Farm? And finally, some chocolate. Hurry, Mr. T. I think she's on her way. Hello, Vicky. Lovely to see you. Me and my friend Mr T have a big surprise for you. I decided that it's about time someone made a treat just for you. After all of the amazing treats you always give to other people. So we decided to make you Vicky's treasured treat served in the perfect ice cream cone. Here you go, Vicky, just to say thank you. Did you see how happy that ice cream surprise made her, Gecko? I've never seen her so happy. That's given me an idea. Maybe we should go and give some treats to more people who deserve them. So who's ready for some free ice creams, guys? Now let's serve the amazing crew of the RNLI lifeboat. Guys, how do you do? You all right? Well, guys, you lot deserve a free ice cream, so there you go. There's plenty of yummy ice cream for the amazing volunteers who work in charity shops. They raise money for good causes. There we are, Paula. Thank you very much for being such a lovely person to the community. Oh, thank you. You enjoy that, my love, and there's one there for your colleague as well, yeah? Okay then, no problem at all. Enjoy. Farmer Andy works really hard down on the farm. It's time he had a break and some yummy ice cream, all topped off with his special strawberries. Nothing puts a smile on people's faces quite like an ice cream gecko. I've loved spreading a bit of joy to Vicky and all of these amazing people. Thanks to Mr T for making all of his wonderful creations. Have a think if you could do something special to put a smile on someone's face today. 
I think you can really brighten up somebody's day. I'll see you again soon. Bye! Bye. Hello everyone! I'm spending the day with some real recycling trucks today to see how these amazing vehicles tidy away our waste whilst also looking after our planet. There's so much happening here at the recycling depot with trucks coming and going. Just look at how the little forklift trucks zoom around taking the rubbish out of the sides of the trucks and tipping them into their own special places. But our story begins at home. Have you ever wondered what happens to the rubbish you put in your bins? Recycling trucks have special days when they come past your house to collect all of the rubbish. Recycling is a way of separating different types of rubbish that you throw out so that it can be used again and again. This all starts at home, so it's up to all of us to separate plastics, paper, cans and food waste into their different bins to get them ready for collection. Here comes the truck now. It's purple. I love purple. This is Simon and Daniel and they drive the recycling truck down the street collecting all of this rubbish. They jump out of the truck and put the different types of rubbish in their own special place on board. Look, there's a place for everything. Cans and plastic go here. Glass goes in here. Food waste goes in here. With paper and cardboard at the back in these compartments. When the truck is full, it's time to head back to the depot to empty everything out. First, the truck drives onto some weighing scales. These are just like scales in your bathroom at home. But instead of weighing people, they weigh trucks. This tells the control centre just how much rubbish is on board the truck. Then. It's time for the zoomy little forklifts to do their whizzy work. They pull each container out from the sides of the truck and drive them to their own special place at the depot. Wow! Listen to that noisy glass. Huge bulldozers are used to push all the loose materials into a big pile. Then, to make everything smaller so that it can be easily transported for recycling, loose materials like plastic, cans and paper are squashed into bales. The final stage of recycling is called reprocessing. This is the bit where these bales are turned into something new that we can use again. The bales are taken on the back of big lorries to special factories for reprocessing. Glass can be melted down and made into new bottles. And the bales of cans can also be melted and turned into new cans ready to be filled with new drinks. When we recycle, it means we don't have to cut down new trees to make paper. We can keep reusing the paper we already have. Recycling is amazing but not as amazing as our beautiful planet that we all live on. That's why we have to work together to recycle and reuse our rubbish. Thanks to all the team at Kia for taking me out on their special recycling trucks today. See you again soon. Bye. Hello everyone. I love steam trains. So today is my lucky day. I'm in North Wales to go on a ride through the Snowdonia Mountains and learn all about these amazing machines. Woohoo! This train is just leaving the station now. Look at all that steam coming out. It's no wonder they're called steam trains. 
Many years ago, these trains were used to transport slate from up high in the mountains. But now they're just used to take lucky passengers on amazing train rides. Come on, let's get on board. These old-fashioned carriages are very comfy and you can even get yummy hot chocolate served straight to your seats. This train is the best! Just look at the amazing views out of the windows as we steam our way through the Snowdonia Mountains. Wow, it's beautiful here! We're all very clean and comfortable in here. But I wonder what it's like for the driver in the cabin up front. The part of the train that does all of the hard work is called the locomotive. And it's up to the driver and the fireman to keep the locomotive running and pulling all of those carriages and passengers. Steam trains run on coal and the fireman has to shovel lots of it into the firebox to keep the engine running. This is Ian, and he's the driver of this locomotive. Ian, please can you tell us how coal makes the train go? So this is the coal we burn on our steam engine. We put it in the fire there. We burn it and that creates lots and lots of heat. And that heat we use to boil this water. Um, it's just like boiling your kettle at home. It makes the steam come out the top, but we capture that steam and we send it to the front of this steam loco and that makes us go. To make sure there's enough coal for the journey ahead, the crew have to load up the train's coal from the coal store at the station. This is hard, tiring and dirty work. All of the crew that work on the train are volunteers too, which means they don't get paid. They do it because they love the trains. This is Claire and she's the fireman. It's her job to load the coal into the firebox and keep that fire roaring. And what I'm doing now is I'm making my fire bigger because we're pulling a very big train today. So it needs a nice, big, very hot fire to be able to do that. I love steam trains because I just find them magical. As well as loading the coal into the train, it's just as important to make sure the train has plenty of water in the tank because this is what gets turned into steam, which pushes the train forwards. The crew are topping up this train's tank with water now. Wow, this one's thirsty. Ian, how do you drive a steam train? We drive a steam train by making it go faster like that. And then this is the brake. And this is what we use to stop ourselves. So this lever here makes us go either forwards or backwards. And that is how you drive a steam train. Let's take a look at the different parts of a steam train. Here's the cab. This is where the driver and fireman drive the train and load the fire. Inside here is the firebox, which is really, really hot. Above the firebox sits the boiler, where the water is stored. Because this is right above the fire, the water boils and turns into steam. The steam is then forced down through a pipe and pushes something called a piston, which then drives the wheels forwards or backwards. This is the chimney, which is where the smoke from the firebox can escape. And most importantly, this is the whistle. The whistle works when I pull this handle. And that means that steam is going up to the whistle and making the sound. Ian's connecting a carriage to the locomotive. This is called coupling. Because these trains are very old, they take a lot of looking after which is why the Festiniog and Welsh Highland Railway have their own special garage 
with an amazing team of engineers, mechanics, joiners, and painters. This place is a hive of activity. In here, they're building a brand new carriage from scratch. And in here, this is where the beautiful details on the outside of the carriage are painted on by hand. Well, it's time for me to say goodbye to these beautiful trains. Thanks very much to all the team at the Festinjog and Welsh Highland Railway for teaching us all about steam trains. See you again soon. Bye! Hello everyone! Whoa, look at that! That isn't just any bus. That's a double-decker bus. Look, there's a downstairs and an upstairs. I'm just waiting at a bus stop for the next bus to arrive. All you have to do to catch a bus is put your hand out like this and the bus will stop. This is Brian and he's the driver of this bus. He sits in a place called the cab. Here it comes now! Brian presses the red button and the doors fold open. This bus is special because it can move up and down to let people get on more easily. Red Mechanical, where have you been on this bus? You've been playing in the junkyard? Oh well, I hope you had fun. Come on, let's get on board. You can fit up to 75 people on this double-decker bus. I think I'm going to sit upstairs to see the lovely views. Woohoo! I can see everything up here! The wheels on the bus go round and round Round and round, round and round The wheels on the bus go round and round All day long Here we are back at the bus depot I'll just press the bell to ask the driver to stop. Shall we have a closer look at the controls here in the cab? The driver can press all sorts of buttons to make things happen. This button controls the sign on the front of the bus, which tells people where the bus is going to. This is the ticket machine. And these screens are connected to cameras so the driver can see the passengers upstairs. These buses travel all over the city, so they sometimes get very dirty. Shall we put this double-decker bus through the special bus wash to give it a clean? It's time to use the water and brushes to clean our double-decker buses. Through this truck wash, our bus will crawl. Have you ever seen a bus so tall, look at that, clean as a whistle. Where do you think the engine is in this double-decker bus? Surprise! It's here, right at the back. And these buses are special because they run on electricity and diesel. When the bus is going slowly and picking up people from bus stops, the bus uses an electric motor. This makes it much quieter than other buses. Just be careful not to fall asleep on your way home. But even these buses need to be repaired sometimes. Instead of bringing them to Gecko's garage, they're brought here to the Arriva maintenance garage where expert mechanics can repair them. Look how many buses are being worked on at the same time. This bus is having a wheel changed. 
and here's another bus driving into the garage. It drives in and parks over a big hole in the floor called the pit. If there's something wrong underneath the bus, a mechanic can go down into the pit and fix anything while standing underneath. Or they can use a giant hydraulic lift to lift it up and make it even taller. When everything's fixed on the bus, it's time to leave the garage and go back out onto the road to take more passengers where they need to go. I've loved learning all about double-decker buses today. We'll see you again soon. Bye! Hello everyone! I'm here at Claremont Farm today to learn all about tractors. Tractors are the most important vehicle on the farm. They help farmers like Andy and his family do really big jobs, like planting a whole field of potatoes. Let's get out on the road! Oh dear, I think I'm on the wrong tractor. Andy? Ah, here's Andy now with a much newer blue tractor. Andy, can you show us round your beautiful tractor, please? OK, the front of the tractor. These are the heavy weights. So if we're picking up machinery at the back, we don't want the tractor to flip up. So these keep it all straight and on the ground. These are our lights. Sometimes we have to work at night and we need as much light as possible. So not only do we have the headlights, but we have spotlights at the top as well. This is the exhaust pipe. We don't want the exhaust at the back with all the machinery, so we keep it up front here, and it's high so we're not breathing in the fumes. This is the huge tractor tire with big tractor tread here. If it's really wet and muddy in the field, we need as much traction as possible because we don't want to be slipping. The back of the tractor. This is where we connect all the implements. This is called three-point linkage. One, two, three. This goes down and picks the machinery up at the back. And this is my tractor. Thanks, Andy. Tractors can drive on roads, but muddy fields are where tractors can really get to work. The huge wheels mean they'll never lose grip, no matter how sticky it gets. But that doesn't stop it being really bumpy. Whoa! In the spring, it's time for the farmers to get into the tractor and plant some seed potatoes. They drive in straight lines, creating these lovely neat rows. Imagine doing all of this planting by hand. It would take ages. But luckily, with the help of a tractor, you can plant a whole field in just two days. Deep under the ground, those little potatoes are busy spreading and growing into lots of new potatoes all throughout the year. Farmers rely on the changing of the seasons, spring, summer, autumn and winter, to help their crops grow. It's now autumn and the leaves are falling off the trees. Out in the fields, we're going to be using the tractor to dig up the potatoes that we planted. They've been growing all summer long. You can put all sorts of different equipment onto the back of a tractor. And today, the farmer's attaching a huge potato harvester. Now we're connected, it's away we go! The tractor pulls along the harvester as it pulls out the potatoes from the ground. The potatoes shoot up through the harvester and make their way down this conveyor belt where the farmer checks all of the potatoes. He throws away any bad ones. Once all the potatoes are collected, the harvester lifts them up and tips them into a trailer. The farmer then hooks up the trailer and takes the potatoes back to the farmyard. 
back at base, the farmers open the trailer up and push the potatoes onto another conveyor belt that creates a massive potato mountain. Think of all the mashed potato you can make out of that. Now let's have a look at how you drive a tractor. So this is my tractor cab. This is my steering wheel. And all modern tractors now have power steering, which means that it's easier to turn the big wheels in the field. Here, this red lever, this means the tractor can go forward or back. Forward or back. Here, this is where we turn the lights on. On this side, we have the hare and the tortoise. This is slow and this is fast. We have 15 different gears on a tractor. It's from very, very slow to fast on the road. So, do you remember seeing that big mountain of potatoes? Well, we can't see them now. And here they are. So we have to cover the potatoes with straw. The straw keeps them nice and warm to stop the frost getting in during the winter, but it also stops the light getting in. If a potato sees the light, it turns green and then we can't eat it. So it has to be completely dark. Once the potatoes are ready, they make their way to the kitchen where they're washed peeled and chopped into chips by the chefs in the kitchen. Look at that! Fresh potatoes straight from the field and onto the plate. Yum! I've loved learning all about the different jobs that a tractor can do on the farm. Without these amazing vehicles, farmers wouldn't be able to grow all of those tasty vegetables that end up on your plate. Thanks very much to Andy and everyone at Claremont Farm for teaching us all about their tractors. We'll see you again soon. Bye! Hello everyone! I'm spending the day with a very special type of car today. A Tesla electric car. This car is very, very fast. We're going to learn lots of amazing things about electric cars today. But first, let's have a look inside. Whoa! Look at those doors! That's one of the coolest things I've ever seen. I think it's worth doing a Gecko instant replay on that. Woohoo! These are called falcon wing doors because they look like a bird's wings. And they're designed to open in even really small spaces. Inside the car there's the usual things you'd find. Comfy seats, a steering wheel, pedals, but also this really big screen in the middle which lets you do important stuff like look at the map to see where you're going and play amazing music like toddler fun learning. Listen to the chorus of the Brontosaurus and the Stegosaurus down by the swamp along comes a dinosaur most cars that you see on the road are powered by petrol or diesel, which means they have noisy engines with dirty fumes that come out of the exhaust at the back. Electric cars are completely silent and run on electricity. There's no visits to the petrol station for these cars. All you need to do is plug them in and charge the battery inside. It's just like charging a phone. A battery is something that stores energy until it's needed. You'll find batteries in lots of things. I bet there's a lot of batteries in some of your toys. Once the car's plugged in, the screen shows you just how long is left to fully charge. This electric car is a Tesla Model X and it's got a really big battery inside, which is what helps it go really, really fast. This car can get to 0 to 60 miles per hour in just 
2.9 seconds. This is what 2.9 seconds feels like. Go. Wow, that was fast. Do you know where a car's engine is usually kept? Yes, it's usually in the bonnet in the front of the car. Let's have a look what's in here. Hold on, look at that. It's empty. There's no engine. Tesla cars have electric motors instead, which are connected to the wheels. The bottom part of a car which is connected to the wheels is called a chassis. This is a chassis without the rest of the car on top. The motor sits here and the big battery sits here. One day we'll all be driving around in electric cars because they're better for the planet. Instead of using dirty fuel which creates pollution, very clever engineers have invented amazing new ways of creating electricity. One of the best ways is to use the power of the sun to charge our electric cars. All across the world there are fields of solar panels which point towards the sky. They convert sunlight into electricity. Solar panels are amazing. You can even put solar panels on your roof at home. Now all of this is really important, but sometimes you just want to see a car do a little dance. And this Tesla has a secret dancing mode just for fun. I've loved learning all about these amazing electric cars today. Thanks very much to all the team at Tesla for showing us just what they can do. We'll see you again soon. Bye! Hello everyone! I'm back at the tarmac quarry to meet a special kind of truck. A dumper truck. Dumper trucks drive all around the quarry being very helpful. They work with their friends the excavators and the bulldozers to carry loose rock and sand out of the quarry. A dump truck is the perfect truck for safely carrying heavy loads. These are the wheels. The tyres are big and chunky so that they can grip onto most surfaces. This is the cab, and this is where the driver sits to drive the dumper. But it's the back of the dumper truck that's really special. This is called the hopper, which is where the load is stored. Come on guys, let's load it up. The excavator digs the rock into a big pile. Then the empty dumper truck comes trundling down the hill ready to pick up this big load. The driver then reverses next to the excavator, ready to be loaded up. The hopper can hold lots and lots and lots and lots of rock. This dumper can carry 35 tonnes. That's like carrying five elephants in the back. Whoa! Once filled, it's time to drive the load all the way to the top of the quarry and dump it in a big pile. The hopper has hydraulic rams underneath it, which are really strong and make the hopper tip up. The back gate opens up and the load slides out of the back. I think I feel a song coming on. Dump, dump, dump a truck. Dump, dump, dump a truck. Dump, dump, dump a truck. Oh yeah! He's as yellow as a rubber duck with six giant wheels, so he won't get stuck when driving round the quarry. He's like no other lorry. He's the big dump a truck. is his best mate they work all day 
loading up the rubble The heavyweight's no trouble He's the big dumper truck He's made of thick metal all around And this keeps the driver safe and sound To get into the cabin A ladder's there to climb in He's the big dumper truck Dump, dump, dumper truck Dump, dump, dumper truck Dump, dump, dumper truck Go oh, yeah! It takes real teamwork to keep the quarry moving safely. The dumpers, excavators and bulldozers all work together to move rock as quickly as possible. The bulldozer scoops up lots of sand in its huge bucket. He lifts it up and tips it neatly into the dumper truck's hopper. Sometimes it can get quite dusty in the quarry. So the team here at Tarmac also have a special truck that sprays water along the floor. This helps get rid of the dust that builds up from the construction trucks. I've loved learning all about these amazing dumper trucks today. Thanks very much to all the team here at Tarmac for showing us what they can do. We'll see you again soon. Bye! Hello everyone! Whoa! Look at this amazing red fire truck! This beautiful vehicle has everything that a fire truck should have. Lights, a siren, seats for the crew, a hose for putting out fires and a ladder. But this fire truck is hiding a very special secret. It's also an amazing pizza making truck with a wood fired oven inside. This is Ben. He bought this old fire truck and spent a long time transforming it into the amazing pizza making vehicle it is today. Hello Gecko. Hello Ben. We need to get some cheese for our pizzas. Do you fancy a ride in the fire engine? Yes, please. This fire truck is over 60 years old. Brave firefighters would drive in this special vehicle to go and put out fires. Things worked a little differently 60 years ago in fire trucks. Look, instead of pressing a button for the siren to make a noise, Ben has to wind this lever like this. Here we are at the cheese factory to pick up some special mozzarella cheese. Hi Ben. Hi Hi Gecko. Here's mozzarella. Fantastic, thank you very much. Right Gecko, let's go make some pizzas. There's lots of things that go into making the perfect pizza, but one of them is heat. A really hot oven is what's needed, and luckily, Ben has a special wood burning oven which uses real fire. Ben starts off with small sticks called kindling to get the fire started, before adding larger logs to make the fire bigger. Ben then safely pushes the burning logs to the back of the oven to make space for all those yummy pizzas to go in. Remember, fire is very hot and extremely dangerous, so only grown-ups should ever go near it. It 
takes a little while for the oven to get really hot. So Ben sets up the rest of the pizza stall. And here come some helpers to make lots of pizzas. Hi Gecko! Hello everyone, let's get pizza making. Pizzas were invented in Italy. And to make pizza dough, all you need is flour, water, yeast and salt. Ben's already got some dough that he made last night. And now he's busy stretching and shaping it into pizza bases. Once the pizza base is nice and thin, Ben adds some tasty red tomato sauce and the special mozzarella cheese. Then you can put whatever topping you like on your pizza. Yum! The wooden board that the pizza is sitting on is called a paddle. And Ben can now move the pizza towards the scorching hot oven. Put it inside and then slide the pizza off with a shake. The pizza sits right on the floor of the oven where it's super hot. Over 300 degrees to be precise. Luckily, you don't have to wait long for this yummy pizza to be ready, as it only takes a minute. Wow, that looks delicious! Everyone's joining in with the pizza making. Great job, guys! Everyone's doing such an amazing job of making and eating pizzas. It's making me hungry. Hey, Gecko, we made a special pizza just for you. Oh, thank you very much. This pizza is absolutely delicious. I'm really full now, but what an amazing day we've had. Thanks very much to Ben for showing us around his wood-fired pizza engine. And thanks to all you helpers. I'll see you again soon. Bye! Hello everyone! Some of my mechanical friends are trying to get back to Gecko's garage today. So I think we should go and pick them up on this amazing Arriva bus. Buses are fantastic vehicles. They carry lots of passengers around town and take people to places they need to go. Buses have lots of space inside to fit as many people on as possible. What shape is this bus? Yes, it's a rectangle. Look how many seats are in here. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38 seats! Wow! And when the seats are full, there's even places for people to stand. Look, you can hold on to these handrails and these grab handles too to make sure you don't fall over when the bus stops. This is Mary and she's the driver of this bus. Mary's just going round the bus to do all of her safety checks before going out on the road. What shape are the wheels on the bus? Yes, they're a circle. This bus is special because it runs on electricity. That means it doesn't have to be filled with petrol or diesel. But instead, it can be plugged in and charged.
It's got a big battery that stores all of the electricity up on the roof. Hi Gecko, do you want to come and see where I drive my bus? Yes please. Mary sits in a place called the cab and to get into the driving seat, she opens this door and climbs inside. Mary can then press this button to open and close the electric doors. There's lots of other buttons and controls for Mary to press in here too. To start the bus, Mary presses this button. I think it's time we went and picked up the mechanicals. Mary, can I buy a ticket please? To buy a ticket, passengers give the correct money to the driver and she prints them a ticket. Mary can change the sign on the front to tell people where the bus is going. Hooray! We're off to my garage. Don't worry mechanicals, we're coming for you. The bell on the bus goes ding, 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 ding. The bell on the bus goes ding, 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 all day long. The lights on the bus go flash, 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 flash. The lights on the bus go flash, 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 all day long. The tickets on the bus go print, 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 print. The tickets on the bus go print, 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 all day long. The wipers on the bus go swish, 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 swish. The wipers on the bus go swish, 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 all day long. The horn on the bus goes beep, 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 beep. The horn on the bus goes beep, 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 all day long. The doors on the bus go open and close, open and close, open and close. The doors on the bus go open and close all day long. Hello, Red Mechanical. I hope we didn't keep you waiting there too long. Come on board, take a seat. The thing I love best about travelling around on a bus is looking out of the big windows and spotting things. There's lots of different shaped road signs around. This one is square. This one is a circle. And this one is a triangle. This one's very important because it tells vehicles to slow down because there might be children around. Hello, Blue Mechanical. We've had to stop at a traffic light because it's on red. There's three different traffic light colours. Red, amber and green. The red light means stop. The amber light means the signal is about to change. And green means go, go, go. This bus is very smooth and very quiet because it runs on electricity. That means it's even better for the environment than other buses. It's green mechanical. Hello. Right, I think that's everyone now. Let's head back to the garage. Can you remember all of the shapes we've learned today? Rectangle Circle Square And Triangle
thanks very much to Mary and all the team at Ariba for taking us on this amazing bus journey today. What do you say, Mechanicals? That's thank you. We'll see you again soon. Bye!